Captain Michael Turner stood at the helm of the Terran Alliance cruiser, the Intrepid, as it approached the neutral space station, Gaia 9. The metallic sheen of the station reflected the distant sun, a silent sentinel at the edge of contested space. His first officer, Lieutenant Sarah Ramirez, checked the communication channels, ensuring they were open and secure. Everything's set, Captain. The Varnock delegation just docked, Sarah announced, her voice steady despite the underlying tension. Thank you, Lieutenant. Let's make sure we give our guests a warm welcome, Turner replied, adjusting his uniform. He wasn't just a diplomat. He was a soldier, aware that every detail mattered. As the airlock sealed with a hiss, the human delegation prepared to meet their alien counterparts. The Varnock were towering figures, their skin a shimmering silver, eyes a deep void. Their leader, Commander Zorath, stepped forward, his translator buzzing softly. Captain Turner, we meet at last. This gathering will mark a new era. Zorath's voice resonated through the translator. Commander Zorath, we hope for a fruitful dialogue, Turner responded extending a hand that Zorath cautiously accepted. The delegations moved to the conference room, a large circular chamber with a transparent dome showcasing the cosmos. As they settled, Dr. Emily Chen, the lead xenobiologist, whispered to Turner, Keep an eye on their body language, Captain. We don't know much about their expressions yet. Turner nodded, taking a seat opposite Zorath. The initial discussions were cordial, covering trade routes and resource sharing. However, the atmosphere shifted when Zorath's aide suddenly interrupted, handing him a mysterious data pad. Zorath's eyes narrowed as he read the message. Without warning, he slammed the pad down. This meeting is over, he declared, standing abruptly. Commander, what's the issue? Turner asked, rising to match the Varnock's stature. Our outpost on Delphi-4 was just attacked. We believe your people are responsible. Turner glanced at Sarah, confusion etched across their faces. We've authorized no such action, he countered firmly. Let's calm down and figure this out. We don't want unnecessary conflict. Zorath sneered, his tone icy. Perhaps, or perhaps you are simply lying. We will seek our justice. As the Varnock delegation stormed out, Turner turned to his team. Sarah, Emily, with me. We need to talk. Now. They moved to a smaller briefing room, urgency in their steps. Captain, if we didn't attack their outpost, who did? Emily questioned, her brow furrowed. I don't know, but we need to find out. Fast. Sarah, open a channel to HQ. Encrypted. Turner commanded, his mind racing with possibilities. Sarah nodded, working her console rapidly. Channels open, Captain. This is Turner on the asterisk intrepid asterisk. We've got a serious situation at Gaia 9. Possible false flag attack at Delphi for 4. We need intel and surveillance on all known players. Immediately. As they awaited a response, Turner paced the small room. Whatever happens, we need to be prepared. This could escalate quickly. Just then, the console beeped, an incoming message lighting up the screen. Captain, it's HQ. They've got something you need to see. The screen flickered, displaying surveillance images. A third unknown alien craft near Delphi 4, just before the attack. Looks like we've got a third player trying to stir the pot, Turner mused, his gaze hardened. Let's figure out who they are before this goes any further. Sarah and Emily nodded, the weight of their next steps heavy in the air. The balance of peace and war hung delicately in the vast, unforgiving expanse of space. Back aboard the Intrepid, Captain Michael Turner convened an urgent meeting in the war room. His core team was present. Lieutenant Sarah Ramirez, Dr. Emily Chen, and a new addition, Major Tom Edwards, a military strategist. We have a serious problem. Turner began, tapping the display to bring up an image of the Varnock fleet amassing near the Terran border. The Varnock have issued an ultimatum following the Delphi 4 incident. They're blaming us for the attack and demanding our submission or face invasion. Major Edwards leaned forward, his eyes scanning the fleet positions. Their formation suggests they're ready to strike at any moment. We need to bolster our defenses and prepare for the possibility of conflict. Emily interjected. We should also consider the possibility of a diplomatic resolution. Perhaps if we can prove our innocence in the Delphi 4 attack. Sarah cut in. I agree with Emily. But we need more than just innocence. We need leverage. Captain, perhaps it's time to consider deploying the stealth scouts for intelligence gathering. Turner nodded. Do it. Tom, coordinate with Sarah on defense. Emily, I need you to work with our allies. See if anyone else has had similar incidents with the Varnock. The team sprang into action, 
each member clear on their new responsibilities. Turner stayed back to review the latest communications from Earth's command. As he sifted through the reports, a secure message popped up on his screen. It was an intelligence briefing indicating that the unknown third party might be mercenaries hired by a rival alien faction, the Ziltai, aiming to destabilize human Varnock relations. Armed with this new information, Turner called another meeting. Looks like we're not just dealing with the Varnock. There's another player, the Ziltai, possibly manipulating the situation. We need to expose them without escalating the conflict. Emily suggested, what if we could bring this evidence to a neutral party? The Intergalactic Council could mediate if we prove both our innocence and the Ziltai's involvement. Excellent idea, Turner replied. But we'll need concrete proof. Sarah, how soon can the scouts be ready? Within the hour, Captain, Sarah responded, her tone resolute. Then let's not waste time. Prepare for a covert mission. Tom, make sure our defenses are solid. I don't want any surprises. As the team dispersed to their assignments, Turner looked out the viewport at the stars beyond. The weight of command was heavy on his shoulders, but he knew the survival of humanity in this galactic arena depended on the next moves he and his team made. Hours later, Sarah reported that the stealth scouts were in position near a suspected Ziltai base. The live feed from the scouts showed clear evidence of Ziltai ships and possibly even captured Varnock technology. This is it, Turner said, observing the feed. Gather all the evidence and let's prepare a case for the Council. It's time to show the galaxy that humans won't be scapegoats in this interstellar game of chess. With their plan set, Turner and his team prepared to take their evidence to the Intergalactic Council, hoping to avert a war and prove humanity's worth among the stars. As they worked, the looming threat of the Varnock fleet remained ever-present, a dark cloud over their every move. Captain Michael Turner stood in the briefing room aboard the Asterisk Intrepid Asterisk, the gravity of their mission etched across his face. Before him gathered a select group of individuals, each a specialist in their own right, pulled from various corners of Earth and its off-world colonies. This was humanity's last chance to prevent a catastrophic war with the Varnock Empire. Everyone, thank you for joining on such short notice, Turner began, his voice commanding the room's attention. We face an unprecedented threat, and each of you has been chosen not just for your skills, but for your ability to think outside the box in dire situations. He gestured to the screen displaying the profiles of the new team members. First was Dr. Liam Neeson, an expert in alien technology and former head of the Xenotech lab at the Martian colony. Next, Captain Jenna Rodriguez, a tactical operations specialist from the Luna Garrison, known for her ingenious field tactics. Alongside them stood Hakim Alfadi, a communications expert and linguist, crucial for understanding and negotiating under pressure. Turner continued, Our objective is twofold. First, we need to gather undeniable proof of the Ziltai's involvement in the Delphi IV incident. Second, we prepare for any possible engagement with the Varnock forces. Dr. Neeson, you'll work closely with Dr. Chen on analyzing any alien tech we recover. Liam nodded, his expression serious. I've reviewed the preliminary data. There's something off about the tech signatures. I suspect a hybridization of Varnock and unknown technologies. Good, Turner replied. Jenna? Your role will be to coordinate our defense strategies with Major Edwards. The Varnock are formidable. We need innovative strategies if it comes to a conflict. Jenna's face was stoic, her eyes sharp. Understood, Captain. I've started simulations based on their known tactics. We'll be ready. Turner then turned to Hakim. And Mr. Alfadi, your insights into alien languages will be crucial. We can't afford misunderstandings, especially not now. Hakim gave a confident nod. I've already started compiling communication logs from previous Varnock encounters. We'll find a way to talk to them, or at least understand them better. With roles assigned, Turner addressed the team with a rallying call. This mission isn't just about survival, it's about securing our place in the galaxy. We need to be smart, swift, and prepared for anything. I trust each of you to perform your duties with the utmost skill and dedication. As the meeting dispersed, the team members mingled, sharing ideas and building the camaraderie that would be necessary to face the challenges ahead. Turner pulled Sarah aside. Sarah, keep the channels open with Earth Command. We need real-time updates on any movements from the Varnock fleet. We'll do, Captain, Sarah replied, her tone determined. We won't get caught off guard. Meanwhile, Turner took a moment to gaze out the viewport at the stars. The weight of the upcoming diplomatic and possibly military engagements weighed heavily on him, but the assembled team gave him hope. 
With these experts at his side, humanity had a fighting chance to avert a war and prove their mettle in the cosmic arena. The future of human and alien relations hung in the balance, and it was up to them to tip the scales in favor of peace. The atmosphere aboard the Intrepid was charged with anticipation. Captain Michael Turner stood before his assembled team in the war room, their faces illuminated by the glow of tactical displays. The room was quiet, save for the low hum of the ship's engines and the occasional beep of incoming data. All right, team, Turner began, his voice firm yet composed. We've received confirmation that the Varnock outpost on Delron 6 is less guarded than usual. This is our chance to strike, gather the intel we need, and potentially cripple their supply chain. This mission is risky, but it's vital. Captain Jenna Rodriguez, who had been reviewing the last of the mission specs, nodded. The outpost is shielded and has anti-aircraft capabilities, but our new stealth tech should get us past their defenses. We'll need to be quick and precise. Dr. Liam Neeson interjected. I've prepared the specialized EMP devices. Once deployed, they'll knock out the outpost's electronic defenses long enough for us to get in and out undetected. Turner looked around the room, meeting the eyes of each team member. Jenna, you'll lead the ground assault team. Liam, you're with her. I need you to oversee the deployment of the EMP. Hakeem, you'll stay with me on the Intrepid to maintain communications and monitor Varnock chatter for any hint of our operation. Hakeem Alfadi gave a slight nod, his expression focused. I'll keep the line secure and alert you to any incoming communications. The team moved out, each member clad in dark, non-reflective combat suits. They boarded the stealth shuttle, a sleek vessel designed to evade detection, its surfaces matte and absorbing light rather than reflecting it. As the shuttle approached Delron 6, Sarah Ramirez, from the Intrepid's bridge, provided a last-minute update. All systems are green. You're clear to proceed. Jenna piloted the shuttle through the Varnock defenses, skillfully maneuvering between sensor nets and surveillance drones. Once in range, Liam activated the EMP devices. A silent pulse emanated from the shuttle, and the outpost's lights flickered and died. EMP successful. You have approximately ten minutes before their backup generators kick in, Liam reported. The team disembarked swiftly, moving through the dimly lit outpost with practiced precision. Jenna led them to the main data vault, where they quickly installed data siphons. Meanwhile, Turner and Hakim monitored from the Intrepid, ready to call a retreat at the slightest hint of trouble. Suddenly, Hakim's console lit up with frantic Varnock communications. Captain, they're on to us. Looks like they detected an anomaly in their systems. Team, wrap it up now! Turner's voice crackled through their earpieces. Just as the last of the data transferred, alarms blared throughout the Varnock outpost. Jenna rallied her team. Move out! Double time! The team sprinted back to the shuttle, dodging returning guards and incoming defensive fire. With seconds to spare, they launched off the surface, the outpost erupting in chaos behind them. Back on the Intrepid, Turner welcomed them aboard. Good work, everyone. We got what we came for. He glanced at the data streaming in. This could change everything. Jenna, catching her breath, looked at Turner. We took a big risk, Captain. Let's hope it pays off. Turner nodded, his eyes already scanning the data. It's a calculated risk, Jenna, and it's just the beginning. We're going to use this intel to turn the tide against the Varnock. This is how we fight back. The success of their mission was a significant boost to the team's morale, but they were all aware that the real battle was just beginning. They had struck the first blow against a seemingly invincible foe, and now they had to prepare for the inevitable retaliation. Back on the Intrepid, the atmosphere was electric with the success of the recent covert operation. Data streamed in from the stolen Varnock intel, and Dr. Liam Neeson, along with Dr. Emily Chen, was deep in analysis. Captain Michael Turner watched over their shoulders as the alien code decrypted on the screen. Here, Liam pointed to a series of schematics on his tablet. These are the designs for a critical component of their command network. It looks like a vulnerability a back door we could potentially exploit. Emily leaned in, scrutinizing the details. If we can engineer a virus to infiltrate this system, we might disrupt their command and control capabilities. It would give us a significant tactical advantage. Turner's eyes narrowed thoughtfully. Do it. Develop that virus. But make sure it's undetectable. We can't afford to tip them off before we're ready to strike. Meanwhile, Captain Jenna Rodriguez and Major Tom Edwards convened in the strategy room, laying out plans for potential military engagements. They spread out maps and projections, calculating the best points for defensive stands and counterattacks. 
Jenna tapped on a region of space near a strategic wormhole. If we can hold this position, we'll cut off their main supply route. It could give us the time we need to deploy Emily and Liam's virus. Tom nodded, marking the spot. I'll start simulations based on their previous attack patterns. We need to be prepared for anything they throw at us. As preparations continued, Turner convened a meeting with Hakim Al-Fadi, focusing on the diplomatic angle. Hakim, I need you to work on our communication lines. If this escalates, we'll need to talk them down quickly. Prepare messages that leverage our new knowledge, something that lets them know we're not in the dark anymore. Hakim adjusted his glasses, tapping notes into his device. I'll prepare several templates. We'll need to be direct but not aggressive. It's a delicate balance to maintain. Back in the lab, Emily and Liam worked tirelessly, programming the virus. The task was intricate, requiring them to mimic Varnock coding patterns perfectly to avoid detection. After hours of focused labor, they conducted a final review. Liam looked over to Emily, exhaustion and hope mingling in his expression. I think we've got it. Should we do a trial run? Emily nodded. Let's test it on the captured Varnock hardware from our last raid. It's the closest we can get to real conditions without actual deployment. The trial was successful, the virus infiltrating the hardware and quietly spreading through the simulated network. It was ready. Turner assembled his team to discuss deployment. We have our weapon, he announced, looking around at the determined faces. Now we plan our strike. Jenna, Tom, get your squads ready. Emily, Liam, ensure the virus is uploaded to our drones. Hakim, prepare the diplomatic channels. We hit them with everything we have. The team dispersed, each member with a role to play in the upcoming showdown. Turner stayed behind, looking at the star map glittering on the screen. His thoughts were a mix of strategy and concern. Success was within reach, but so was catastrophic failure. The weight of command lay heavy on him, but he was not alone. His team, a blend of Earth's finest minds and bravest souls, was with him. As the intrepid moved into position, the silent expanse of space around them seemed to hold its breath. The future of humanity among the stars hinged on the success of their next actions, and they were ready to face whatever came their way. The tension aboard the Intrepid was palpable as Captain Michael Turner oversaw the final preparations for the imminent confrontation with the Varnock fleet. In the strategy room, monitors displayed the locations of enemy ships converging near the strategic wormhole, their movements a menacing dance of impending warfare. Status report, Turner demanded, his voice cutting through the low buzz of conversations. Captain Jenna Rodriguez, now in full combat gear, stepped forward, her expression stern. All units are in position, Captain. Stealth drones are loaded with the virus and ready to deploy at your command. Dr. Emily Chen chimed in from her station, where she was double-checking the virus's integrity. The virus is stable and should integrate seamlessly into their network. We expect to see immediate effects on their command communications and weapon systems. Major Tom Edwards, overseeing the defensive preparations, added, Our forces are ready to hold the line at the wormhole. If the virus works, we'll push forward while their systems are down. Turner nodded, processing each piece of information. Execute the plan. Deploy the virus and Jenna. Initiate the distraction maneuvers. We need them looking the other way when our drones slip through. As the orders were carried out, Hakim Al-Fadi worked diligently on establishing secure lines for potential diplomatic communications. Channels are open, Captain. We're ready to talk if they show signs of standing down. The first phase of the plan went smoothly. Stealth drones, nearly invisible against the backdrop of space, breached the Varnock perimeter and began their infiltration. Within minutes, reports confirmed the successful integration of the virus. Aboard the Varnock ships, chaos ensued as their systems malfunctioned, leaving them vulnerable and disoriented. Virus is active. We're seeing a cascade of errors in their fleet's coordination. Liam announced, monitoring the feedback from the drones. Move in! All units, advance! Turner commanded, seizing the opportunity. The Terran forces, bolstered by the confusion within the Varnock ranks, initiated a full-scale assault. Battles erupted across the sector, the silence of space broken by the silent flashes of ship-to-ship -ship combat. Jenna led the charge, her ship darting through the disorganized Varnock lines, targeting critical vessels. We're breaking through their defenses, she reported her voice a mix of focus and adrenaline. Meanwhile, Tom coordinated the defensive units, ensuring that any counterattack by the Varnock was quickly stifled. Hold those positions, he ordered, watching as Terran ships maneuvered into strategic points around the wormhole. 
As the battle reached its climax, a sudden message from the Varnock commander crackled through the communications network. Cease your attack. We are willing to negotiate, the distorted voice declared, the strain evident even through the static. Turner glanced at Hakim, who nodded, ready to handle the negotiations. Open a line to their commander, Turner said, stepping forward to address the enemy directly. This is Captain Michael Turner of the Terran Alliance. Your aggression against humanity ends today. We can discuss terms, but know this. Any further hostilities will be met with decisive action. As negotiations began, the fighting slowed and a tense ceasefire took hold. Turner watched, his seasoned gaze never leaving the tactical displays. The turning point had been reached, but the battle for lasting peace was just beginning. He knew the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, but for now, humanity had proven not only their resilience, but their strategic prowess. The Varnock, once thought invincible, had finally met their match. The ceasefire held tenuously as Captain Michael Turner faced the Varnock commander via a secure communication link. The bridge of the asterisk intrepid asterisk was quiet, the crew intently watching their captain navigate this critical moment. Commander Zorath, your forces are compromised, and your options are limited, Turner stated, his voice firm, yet open to diplomacy. We can end this conflict here with honor, or we can continue until your fleet is in ruins. The choice is yours. Commander Zorath's image flickered on the screen, his face a mask of frustration and defeat. You have bested us, Captain Turner. We underestimated humanity's capabilities and resolve. What are your terms? Turner nodded to Hakim Al-Fadi, who had prepared the diplomatic terms. We require your immediate withdrawal from all contested systems and a formal treaty of non-aggression. We also insist on a mutual exchange of prisoners and war reparations to cover the damages caused by your initial attacks. Zorath bristled slightly, but then sighed, the weight of the situation pressing down upon him. Very well, we will comply. But know this, human, we will remember this day. The day we were humbled. As the terms were digitally signed and the ceasefire solidified into a formal peace, the intrepid crew breathed a collective sigh of relief. Turner turned to his team, pride and gratitude in his eyes. Well done, everyone. This victory wasn't just for us, it's a victory for all of humanity. In the following days, as news of the peace treaty spread across human territories, celebrations erupted. Humanity had faced a formidable enemy and emerged victorious, shifting the power dynamics in the galaxy. Back on Earth, Captain Turner was called to a high-level briefing with global leaders and military strategists. They analyzed the implications of the victory and planned for future security measures. We've shown the galaxy that humans are not to be underestimated, Turner addressed the assembly. But let us also remember the cost at which this peace was bought. We must continue to strengthen our defenses and foster alliances. The galaxy is vast, and we are not alone. Meanwhile, Jenna Rodriguez and Dr. Emily Chen were tasked with overseeing the integration of Varnock technology into human systems, hoping to bolster humanity's technological prowess. Major Tom Edwards and Liam Neeson spearheaded a new defense initiative based on the tactics and technologies developed during the conflict. As Turner returned to his ship, he reflected on the journey. The asterisk intrepid asterisk was preparing for its next mission, this time focused on exploration and alliance building. Humanity had secured its place among the stars, but the universe was still full of unknowns and new challenges. In his quarters, Turner gazed out at the stars, a thoughtful expression on his face. They called them invincible, he murmured to himself, recalling the Varnock's fearsome reputation. But they hadn't faced us yet, and now, they never will forget us. As the Intrepid set off into the deep void, its crew ready for whatever came next, Captain Michael Turner knew that this victory was just the beginning. Humanity's future in the galaxy had never looked brighter nor more daunting. But with the spirit and courage shown in the face of the Varnock, he was confident they were ready for anything. The Intrepid returned to Earth amidst a hero's welcome. The sky above the spaceport was alight with fireworks, and crowds cheered as Captain Michael Turner and his crew disembarked. The victory against the Varnock had uplifted humanity's spirits and outlook on their place in the galaxy. Turner, along with his team, Lieutenant Sarah Ramirez, Dr. Emily Chen, Major Tom Edwards, and the rest, was greeted by top government officials and military brass. Their courageous actions had not only averted a war, but also established Earth as a formidable power in interstellar relations. As the celebrations continued, Turner was whisked away to a series of debriefings and interviews. The world was eager to hear their story, 
the story of how humanity stood up against a so-called invincible enemy and prevailed. We didn't just fight for our survival, we fought for our right to be part of the galactic community, Turner explained during a televised interview. His words resonated across countless homes, inspiring a new generation to look up at the stars not as distant, cold lights, but as destinations within reach. In the following weeks, a formal peace treaty was ratified between Earth and the Varnock Empire at a grand ceremony held at the United Nations. The treaty included clauses for trade, cultural exchanges, and a mutual defense pact against any future threats from other aggressive alien factions. Turner, standing beside Commander Zorath, shook hands once more this time in front of a global audience. The aftermath of the conflict saw a surge in interstellar exploration and technology development. Jenna Rodriguez led a task force designed to integrate Varnock technology into Earth's defenses. Dr. Liam Neeson and Dr. Emily Chen headed a joint research initiative to study other potential alien threats and opportunities. Humanity's victory had opened new doors and brought a sense of unity and purpose. The Earth Alliance was formed, a coalition of Earth and its colonies, dedicated to securing human interests in space while promoting peace and cooperation with alien civilizations. Months later, Turner visited a new training facility for young cadets eager to join the space fleet. He watched as they simulated space maneuvers and tactical scenarios. Their enthusiasm and determination were palpable, filling him with hope and pride. Captain Turner, what should we strive for out there? One cadet asked during a Q&A session. Strive to understand more than we fear, to explore more than we settle, and to bridge more gaps than we create, Turner replied, his gaze sweeping over the young faces. The galaxy is vast, and its mysteries are waiting for us. It's our duty and privilege to approach them with respect and curiosity. As he left the facility, Turner looked back once more, his thoughts drifting to the intrepid, now undergoing upgrades for future missions. The peace they had fought for was more than a cessation of hostilities. It was a beacon for a new era of exploration and cooperation. Standing alone for a moment, Turner felt a profound connection to the endless possibilities that lay ahead. Humanity was no longer just fighting for survival, but thriving as a key player on the galactic stage. The future was indeed a new beginning, one that promised adventures and challenges, but also the undeniable proof that when united, humanity could face any odds and emerge stronger.